If cursing is a sign of intelligence, then these two are brilliant. Meet award-winning radio show hosts Jonna Spilbor and Carol Pesci as they interview smart people, offer up a tidbit or two of advice, and threaten to kick your ass if you don't think positive. It's happy hour, live straight up with a twist. Alcohol may or may not have been involved in the making of the show. Please watch responsibly. I'm Carol Pesci. Welcome to Happy Hour. I'm here with my co-host, Jonna Spilbor. We've got a fabulous show ahead for you today. We are going to do a combination of making asses out of ourselves and uh, talk no with our very good friend, Kara Alwell Leba. She's a master life coach, founder of the Champagne Diet. Love the sound uh -huh. of that. <laughs> and she's going to be talking to us about her book and the concept of girl code. Mm -hmm. Which I actually recently listened to. I don't read books. I only listen to my books. And it is a fabulous listen. We also have our fabulous bleep sponsor today, Sheer Love Salon in Wappingers Falls. Now, if you think Carol and I look fabulous, it's their fault. <laughs> so Sheer Love hopefully will be giving our bleep sponsor its money's worth today. I think that's a fabulous idea. Fucking awesome. Very good. And let's also thank our studio audience for being here with us today. Oh, yeah. You know what? They're having a great time. Can't you tell? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's awesome. <laughs> so, I, a funny story. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of our guest coming up, and she's actually a personal friend of ours. Yes, she is. So, getting ready for this show, I did a test Skype with her. And I said to her, texting back and forth, let's plan it for 10 o'clock uh, tomorrow morning. Um, she says, this is phone, right? No makeup. I'm like, well, it is video. We want to make sure we can capture it, but no makeup. It's just, it's not going to go anywhere. We're going to delete it. Yeah. So she takes a little bit more time than I would expect to get ready to be on Skype. And I'm there in my yoga pants, zero makeup, hair up. Maybe and had my glasses on. Glam factor. The horror. Like big glam factor. I log on with Kara and she looks fucking fabulous. She's got her eyelashes on, her eyebrows are done. She's got beautiful pink hair, as you'll see. And I'm like, mm -hmm. you cheated. You, you cheated. That, you know, and so it makes it, it, it actually made me think of you, it's honestly. Not cheating. Um, yeah, because I know I'm a little more lax about going out of the house. If I have to get an errand done, if I've got to just go walk the dog, mm -hmm. or if I've just got to go run down to the post office, I'm just gonna make sure I don't have any dirt on my face and I'm out the door. Wow. Um, but, um, which has backfired on me more than more than one occasion. But uh, you, you're a little bit different with that when it comes to uh, how you'll let yourself be seen no, I will outside not, of the doors of your home. I will not go to the mailbox without lipstick. <laughs> And a quaff. Like, I just won't. I won't take out the garbage, like, in, in sweatpants. Never. The, I, no. There was one time when I needed to go onto my back porch. You look like you porch. even just cringed just then. I did. I needed to go on my back porch, and I was wearing a robe, and I had to go upstairs, put on a full outfit, and go and, you know, pick a stick up off the deck. Like, I will not, because you never. Listen. Like you that. never know. Cameras are everywhere. Somebody's always watching. They're everywhere, right? And I don't want to see my pajama cloaked self with the crazy bedhead on page six, you know, without my eyes blacked out. Like, it's never going to happen to me. It's never going to happen to me. So, yeah, I will not, you know, you just never know. I don't even like to be seen fully coiffed like pumping gas. Like even then I'm like, cause I, I look a little awkward when I'm doing it. It's just not something I've been able to master. I know, I know, I just, I just can't like- <laughs> That it. and grocery shopping. Oh. Or cooking. Please, right. Like I said, we can't be great at everything. We just can't. But you can always look great. I guess that's the point. Well, Bingo. I'm learning and that's, from you. Yeah, cause I've been caught once do. or twice and why didn't I just take a little more time? Well, <laughs> and because if, if I would like to know about that because it's never, you don't just get caught by, oh, you know, there's my old neighbor, Betsy. You're going to get caught by maybe Bradley Cooper, for example, or perhaps uh, somebody mm -hmm. who you used to bang. Did that happen, Carol? <laughs> Did that maybe happen? <laughs> hmm? Hmm. hmm. Is that a story I told once? Uh, I, I don't remember. Maybe you could retell it. No. Well, yeah, so that actually did happen. Walking my dog one morning. And, you know, really, you're walking your dog. You're, you're getting up point. first thing in the morning, yoga pants, sweatshirt, 
throw the leash on the dog and mm -hmm. down the sidewalk mm -hmm. you go and coming the other way is your ex-boyfriend. What are the chances? It was awesome. What are the yeah, chances? There was no fucking tree, no telephone pole. There was no way to like dodge, pretend I fell and cover my face. It was just uh, head on. And you know what? And I had this tape in my head that's going, John is going to kill me. Like I yep. somehow broke a little bit of a girl code by going out of the house. You deserved like it. I did. You yeah. deserved I learned. every learned. painful second of that. Lesson learned. Now, having chastised you, I will say that men don't give a shit that you don't have makeup on. We've had other guests in the past. That's, you know, men don't care that you think you're five pounds <laughs> overweight. Men don't care that your hair no. is in a ponytail. They don't care. They still want to fuck you. It just, that's the way it, that's the way it is because there are men. That's Thank story. the Lord. Yes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's get to our guest. We have, as we mentioned, a good friend of ours, Kara Alwil Leba. She is a master life coach, founder mm -hmm. of the Champagne Diet. She's written multiple Author. books. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Champagne Diet, Sparkle, Fearless and Fabulous. Yep. And her latest book, which we both read and love, mm -hmm. Girl Code. So she is with us here today to talk, talk to us about her book, Girl Code, and what that means and what we can learn from that. Yep. So, Kara, welcome to our show. We're so excited to have you. You look fabulous. As always. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Which, by the way, we kind of made fun of, uh, not, not totally fun of you, more fun of me. <laughs> we, we, no, we have never made no, fun of you. We made fun of me in the intro because we were doing the test Skype, and I said oh, that yeah. we came on, and you looked absolutely amazing with your pink hair and your eyelashes, and, and I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you looked amazing too but yes the wake up face it's like the there's like levels to it I feel like sometimes it's like okay quick lip gloss and eyeliner like that's like the quick like the two minute face <laughs> This is like a full face day. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit of work involved. You look right. fabulous. You do. So tell us um, why don't we start with what was your inspiration to write um, Girl Code? What, is, what does this mean to you? What, what made you want to do this? So I was working a full-time job. I was in a corporate job. I was at MTV for eight years. And when I was transitioning into running my business full-time, I'm a life coach and a writer, I was observing the women around me. And I noticed that there were two types of women out there. There were the women who were like really catty and competitive and talking about other people and always stacking themselves up against everyone else. And then there was this other very small group of women, you ladies included, who were just happy and vibrant and thriving and the biggest thing that I noticed was that women like you and these happier women were also very supportive of everyone around them. Mm -hmm. And there was no competition. It was like, we can just all be fabulous. We can all win. We can all be successful. And I knew I wanted to be with that happier group of women. So I started observing, you know, those behaviors and I started, you know, implementing a lot of those qualities into my own life. And I, I feel like I'm sort of naturally like that. You know, I've never really been like that kind of competitive person. I, I really genuinely believe that we can all have everything that we want. And I felt like I had to write about it. So Girl Code is really, it's not about building a business. It's not about making a certain amount of money in your career. It's really about the mindset that you need to be happy and to be successful as a female entrepreneur or a, any professional female. And like you said, sticking together and having the other girls back like that to me, that is girl code. I think that mm -hmm. we can advance ourselves so much more when we're looking out for each other and helping each other. And as you said, there's more than enough to go around and, and we help ourselves and we help other people. Yeah. And we're better together because I don't know everything. You guys don't know everything. None of us right. know everything. We can put our minds and our talents together. We're unstoppable. And you know, Kara, in the book, you actually walk the walk. One of the things I really liked about the book is that you went out and found other women who adhere to Girl Code because they wanted to share their stories and they do share their stories in the book, which is just amazing. And I learned a lot. I learned a great deal by listening to those interviews and they were all, one was more fascinating than the next. I really liked that part of the book. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, again, like it's true Girl Code. Like it's not just yeah. about me. You know, I wanted to show people from all different backgrounds, all different career paths, mothers, you know, women who don't have children. Just, I really wanted to make it a book that was accessible to everybody. Yeah, and it was awesome. I did and the cover, can, uh, can we get a close-up on this? Because the cover is just absolutely gorgeous and ridiculous. I love it. As soon as, and I think you might, have shared, to... you might have shared the cover with us ahead of time, and I was just like, that is fucking yeah. awesome. Like, bravo. <laughs> well I done. love black and pink. I wanted it to look like my style, like the clothes I wear, or like just like, 
I wanted it to feel feminine, but really powerful and strong at the same time and a little bit mysterious. So mm -hmm. hopefully we nailed it. Perfect. You totally nailed it. So t tell us <laughs> some of the principles. Um, we're talking in, you know, theory about girl code and supporting it, but tell us a little bit of other, a few specifics about the book, um, maybe a story or maybe a point that you feel is important to get across to people about this book and what you believe in. Oh, there's so many, it's so hard to pick. But I think one of them that comes up a lot, and I think this is really important to talk about, and I talk about this pretty much in all my books and all the writing that I do, is reframing failure. So I think as women, we kind of look at our lives and we look at our career path especially and say, oh my God, I totally fucked this up, or I totally made a mistake, or I didn't hit that goal that I wanted to hit. But if we can learn to view all of those, quote, failures as just experiences that build us as women and build our character and give us stories to tell and things to teach, we can completely transform the way that we view our success. I think redefining success and making sure that your version of success is going to look different than someone else's. So making sure that you stay true to yourself and what it is that you want for your life is crucial, I think, as to be successful as a woman. Yeah, you made a couple of powerful points right there. And like our ability to bounce back, and I know that we are our, our own worst enemies. And yeah. I know and I know better. And I still do things that I know better about. Like when I when I screw something up and I know that maybe I was capable of, of doing something better and then that just beating myself up after the fact. But really just that becomes an experience. That becomes a part of, of learning. And there's none of us that's ever accomplished anything that hasn't no. done some a mistake gotta, or Learning how not to do something is almost yeah. as valuable. You yep, and you also I have a fan, agree. you have a fantastic anecdote in the book where you know you left and you had to overcome fear like so many of us do. You left a corporate job where you know you were making great money, and I remember it was I I laughed out loud when you were telling the story about how you put the music in your ear and you'd pictured this whole scenario about how you were going to go out, <laughs> and it was all the same except except you were listening to your iPod. It wasn't like you know trombones in the background, and that was that was very inspiring. And I would say to any woman who really wants to make a change, like maybe you're doing a job that you don't like, or you, you know, you have a dream that you just want to achieve, at least get through that portion of the book and then go ahead and make <laughs> up your mind because it's very inspiring. Yeah. And that song that I listened to, it was that song, Bittersweet Symphony that just kept coming up and I kept hearing mm -hmm. it and I love it. And now it's so funny because the girls who read the book will like send me like a Snapchat when it comes on in their car and they're like, it's my power <laughs> song. And it reminds me of that scene. And like, I think it, it comes down to visualization. Like we all talk about the law of attraction and how important it is to visualize things and putting that image in my head and then actually making it happen was like such a cool moment. Yeah. Yeah. And that's so important because that is a, that was a big change for you. And I know, I, I know you are ready for it, but it's still scary. It's still a, a big change. And that's actually, um, because I've listened to your podcast, um, style your mind, which is fabulous. And, um, that is, one of the things that you talk about in your intro to the podcast is that you are obsessed with women on the edge of change. Yeah. Like, because there's so often that we know we're not quite happy or there's more that we want and we want to grow. Yeah. And that transition point. And I think that's what you're about is like getting from that. Oh, there's more that I want to. Yeah. That's, this is, this is what I want you. That's what you do. Yeah. And I feel like, I mean, it started with my just experiencing my own thing and then seeing my clients and women around me and friends and watching them blossom. And I feel like everybody has, this unlimited potential to unlock. And if they can get their, themselves to a place mentally where they believe it can happen, like watching people blossom and, and transform is like one of the most rewarding things in the world to me because I feel like we are our own worst enemy and we hold ourselves yeah. back from living the lives that we are really truly meant to live. And then we have somebody like you who comes along and reminds us and inspires us to, uh, to look at things a little bit differently and yeah. get that courage because to grow and to make bigger things happen is going to be a little bit scary. And I think that's what holds most of us back. And I'll guarantee yeah, you, you took a little tiny step back in order to take 10,000 steps forward because, you know, you didn't have that corporate paycheck in that transition period of time. And now, you know, you couldn't be happier and you have fabulous yeah, taste in art that you create yourself. <laughs> and, yeah, and right. I'm going to tell you, Cutting myself off from that paycheck and that dependability wow. and all of that stuff made me hustle like I never hustled before. Yeah. And I was coming up with ideas that I didn't even think that I would ever come up with to make money and to survive and to thrive. And it made, it was like, it's, I think like leaving a job and moving into what you love is like the best personal development course you will ever take in your entire yeah. life because you realize how much you're capable of. 
Exactly. See, that's yeah. awesome. You're scared and you do it anyway and you figure it out. Yep. Um, any other final points that you would like to make to our listeners about you, about what you believe in, about your book specifically, Girl Code? You know, I think one thing with Girl Code that I really want to drive home to people is that no one is better than anyone else. And this is something that I see happening all the time. It's like women are like, oh, my God, I can't talk to her. Or, oh, my God, this person actually responded to my Instagram comment. And we tend to put people on pedestals in our culture, whether it's celebrity or fame or success. And I think it's bullshit. I think we have to realize (laughs) that we're all equal and we're all in this life together and trying to figure it out. So if there's a woman out there that you're super inspired by and you feel intimidated by, if you do one thing after this 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 podcast this video just reach out to her send her a note send her an email and just say hey i love what you're doing you know and when you even the playing field you empower yourself oh wow so true that's great so point. perfect what a great way to put it so we'll yeah. make sure we put your graphics up your website to make sure that our, our viewers know how to find you and your your instagram your um all your social media you want to give that to us quickly yeah, so I'm at The Champagne Diet, um, it's just like it sounds, The Champagne Diet on Instagram. That's where I spend most of my time. Um, I love Snapchat as well. So my Snapchat is Glitter Guts Glam. <laughs> um, and that, those are like the two places that I am mostly in on my podcast. So I'm, I'm very social. I'm all over social media. Um, I love interacting with everybody who comes to my page. So come over and say hi. Very good. You're awesome, Karen. Thanks we so love much. you. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. Thank you, ladies. Us. I love you so much. Thank you. All Thanks. right. Bye-bye. See you soon. Yeah, the second I saw this cover, I was like, that she just nailed it. Yeah. Like, absolutely yeah. beautiful. I, yeah, that's what her apartment looks like, I'm pretty yeah, sure. Yeah, we peer <laughs> into her videos and stuff, we kind of get an idea. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One of these days, we'll be sipping champagne with her in her apartment. That's right. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> All right, and now what time is it? What, what are we going to do now? It's time for On the Loose. <laughs> So we're on our way there and uh, can't wait. We're going to take some video when we get there too. Hopefully, unless I'm in charge, because apparently I don't know. Or her security stops us, because you never know. So here's the thing. What you see on the camera, it's not just all about, I know you see your beautiful face and that's all well and good. But then when we share it with people, the rest of the world doesn't live in Jana land where everything's like this. The rest of the world is like this. So then when they play it, it's going to flip and it's going to be this big and I know from personal, no, wait, I don't know from personal experience. I know from you telling me what? you don't like little things. What? That is true. <laughs> <laughs> no, you always do it the other way. Oh, this way is the Oh, you do it that way? Oh, yeah, okay. That's right. Oh, okay, I didn't do that. Yeah. It yelled at me. I'm like, the first video I sent to Ginger is like. So basically, you suck at video. There's one thing I do better than you. <laughs> Imagine that. In the olden days, many moons ago, the 1900s, our televisions had an aspect ratio of 4 by 3. They were square. Anyone over the age of 30 will probably remember the disappointment they felt when they saw this dreaded screen. This film has been modified from its original version. It has been formatted to fit your TV. But it looked so much better when I watched it in the movie theater. Suddenly, Star Wars went from looking like this to looking like this. And then it happened, the most amazing advancement in technology, the flat screen TV in 16 by nine aspect ratio. It was a movie theater in our own living rooms. Folks flocked to the electronic stores to spend a small fortune to have the ability to watch TV with a wider range of view. And it only got better because once HD, high definition, became the norm, even our TV shows were produced in 16 by 9 aspect ratio. We were in TV viewing heaven. Until cell phone cameras. And now everybody shoots their video on a vertical plane, cutting that field of view even less than a standard 4 by 3 aspect ratio. So, let's take a look at what you are losing when you don't turn that phone horizontally. Why have your video look like this when it can look like this? So it's simple. Before you start recording, just turn that phone 90 degrees counterclockwise and you will be amazed at how much better your video looks. 
Jen Sincero has been on our radio show a few times with her first book, You Are a Badass, and her second one, You Are a Badass at Making Money. And so we had this bright idea. She was launching her book. Let's go down to New York City. We'll meet her. She knows us. She's going to love us. Yeah, we're kind of a big we'll deal. We'll be besties. We'll go pal around. Yeah, drinking together and talk with her, get some photo ops. We yeah. brought our camera guy with us. Yep. <laughs> well, <laughs> I guess we showed up a little late and they had a number system. They made us take a fucking number. And it was the last number. So we're at the Strand Bookstore, 18 miles of books. Uh, oh. what? 18 miles of books. And I'm here with Carol. Up there is Jen Sincero. Trust us, she's there. the last to board the plane for yeah, section we're, 12. Uh, 12. 12. 12. Oh, Out of 12. So why were you guys so late? Why were we so late? Because this, so this is typical Jana style. When she gets a skinny margarita, it's usually pretty strong. And she say to me, this is one of those one and dones. Well, it wasn't a one and done. It was a two and, or a three and something. So that's why we were late. And that's why she's talking like that and videotaping like that. Count much? When we get up there, she's going to be She's going to be like, oh my god, it's you guys. She's going to be so happy to see you. I know, it's a happy hour. Fortunately, my buzz is dissipating. So, did you say fortunately or unfortunately? Unfortunately. 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 Unfortunately, I didn't bring my flask. This is happy bitch, yours is the same. Who is it we left home without our flasks? You mean this? <laughs> yeah. So uh, Amateurs. We'll, we'll be up there in about two and a half hours. We'll check back in a bit. We don't have any video of you meeting her. Excuse us. Lie and say that we did. We did get the video, but um, and we met her. Yeah, we definitely met her. She, we met. She was so happy to see she us. She met us. We met her. Yeah, but somehow the file got lost. Yeah, I don't know. She mm -hmm. must have deleted. By I mean, we know she's not a pro, so she must have deleted it. But. All my fault. We didn't meet her. You want my sunglasses? Now would be a good time. You, you wouldn't give them up. <laughs> I ain't giving them up. Carol and Jonna on the Lewis and Met Patton. Carol. <laughs> Who took that video, bitch? I am resourceful. Boom. Speaking of <laughs> that was supposed to be one quick little still shot. <laughs> Who invited you to videotape <laughs> my debut in New York City? <laughs> On a sidewalk. On a mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Nice. You're welcome. All right. So that's a wrap for today. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any new videos that we have coming out, any new shows. Who'd and want to miss that? Who would want to miss that is right. And uh, make sure you like our Facebook page, Net Chicks TV. If you want to be a part of our studio audience, you can uh, contact us through our website, netchicks.tv, or through our Facebook page, and maybe you'll be part of our live studio audience. Why not send a video of you sitting on a toilet in the middle of Manhattan? Be creative, but keep oh, it yeah. kind of clean. It's been done. <laughs> it's already been done, <laughs> yeah, sideways. And uh, let us know if you happen to find Bradley Cooper. Thanks for joining us. See you next time. What did I say the first time? It was a little bit better. Not just you suck. There was something I said right before that, wasn't it? All I heard was you suck. <laughs> They're clapping for us before we even start. <laughs> we like that. We had this much video from that night. <laughs> How do we put this family? It's that switch over there. <laughs> it doesn't appear. Is it gonna work? You might do that. Yeah, it, oh, well, it's gonna make a little noise. All right, we're almost done. All right, I got one more after this.
quit menopausing. Ugh. Facebook page, and maybe you'll be part of our live studio audience. Why not send a video of you sitting on a toilet in the middle of Manhattan? Be creative, but keep oh, it yeah. kind of clean. It's been done. <laughs> it's already been done, yeah, <laughs> side face. And uh, let us know if you happen to find Bradley Cooper. Huh? Good? No? Not even close? Oh, it's it? Oh. So, <laughs> thanks for joining us. Oh. Oh. Doing... Just, say, just say goodbye. Are you to her right yeah, to the single shot? You can just turn right to this camera and be like, See you next time.